So this combination is uh, morning peach and phthalo blue, aka almost night in the bean paint colors. I had wanted to do a looser painting. I could have really played a lot with these types of granulation patterns. Um, I chose, because of the subject, I chose to have a much more controlled painting though. So this is a great two color combination to get that vintage cyanotype effect. Cyanotype is an early photography and printing technique that results in blue colored images. I'm mixing together morning peach and phthalo blue. As you can see, phthalo blue is a really strong color, so a little goes a long way. And just a note about morning peach, this is a light orange color that has been mixed with white, so it's an opaque color. My reference image is from this book of Rodin sculptures. I've made a pencil sketch and done a light wash of morning peach. And now I'm mixing in a little bit of phthalo blue to get a light olive green color and going over that first dried wash with this light olive green. Using the big brush to get large areas of color. Traditionally in watercolor, you paint in many transparent layers, also called glazes. And you paint first your lightest colors, and then you progressively lay on top darker colors. I'm using a quill brush, also called a mop brush, and I love how versatile this brush is because I can use the side of the brush or push down on the brush to get a very thick and full brush stroke for large areas. And I can also use just the tip of the brush to get fine lines and small details. Now I'm mixing more phthalo blue into the mixture to get a blue-green color. I've waited for the last layer of color to dry thoroughly before applying this next glaze of color over the darker areas. It's amazing how shadows can describe so much without making a distinctive drawing of any of the features of the face, but just by painting in the shadows, you can really see the features and the form of the face. I'm painting in the background using the color Morning Peach. However, if you wanted to get more of a true cyanotype look to your painting, you could just not use this color in the background. And here's a look at our progress so far. Look at these beautiful shades of blue and green 
and the loose washes. Really, this could be finished as it is, but since I want to show you what the full range of values looks like from the, the lightest lights to the darkest darks, I'm going to go over this using more phthalo blue. And here it is a little bit later after I've done a couple more layers of um, more of the phthalo blue in the mix. I will continue to add additional glazes of watercolor until I am happy with the final color. Here you see an example of the great brushwork you can get with this type of a brush. I have learned about Chinese brush painting just a little bit, and I really appreciate the economy of strokes in Chinese brush painting. Finally, I can go in and put in some of those fine details like the texture of the hair. Here's the final painting alongside the reference source image. You can see how I exaggerated the angularity and geometry of the face in my painting. And it's totally fine to do that. Make your painting your own interpretation of the source image. Thanks for joining me in painting this vintage cyanotype effect watercolor.